Hey, Key Bros, what do you see? What do you know? As Keith T. Piazza coming right at you. Hey, today's video is going to be about the Hammond B3. And um, I was surprised to find out that a, uh, a lot of the younger guys don't really know about a Hammond, how it works and everything. And, um, you know, growing up in the 60s and everything, um, I mean, uh, it was a time where all you had was a Hammond and electric piano to go out and play. You know, unless you had a portable organ like Parpisa or a Vox or something like that. Um, but uh, the Hammond's really, really big. Um, during my mainstay, I, I used the Hammond M3 a lot because it's the little brother of the B3. And um, um, I really uh, like that. And plus, it, uh, the M3 was a lot easier to carry than the B. But what we got here is the Hammond B3. Uh, this is a 1962. My brother bought this brand new from Joseph, Joseph Horn in Pittsburgh. And uh, a lot of the things, um, actually the B3 was invented by Mr. Hammond. And what he wanted to do is he wanted to come up with his own version of a pipe organ to sell the churches. Then regular musicians got their hands on it and they turned it into um, what we see the modern day. Um, you know what I mean? So basically we're going to talk about what, what the B3, how it works, all right? Um, and, um, and another thing, uh, a good counterpart to the B3 is the Leslie. All right, which basically does a Doppeling effect, and uh, let me find my foot switch here. You know what I mean? And it's got the uh, fast speed and the slow speed. You know what I mean? Then you can even I got a Leslie on mine, so I could actually turn turn everything off. You know what I mean? So now, um. A B3 operates, it has a tone generator, tone wheel generator. It's got these wheel, little wheels that spin, and they have a pickup on them. And uh, so this tone generator spins at a certain RPM. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start the B3. And uh, if you listen, you'll be able to hear how it starts. You have two switches. You have one switch that starts it, and the other switch that turns the amp on, um, the preamp on. Hear it rev up. Came out of Turkey, started. And then what you have here, is a lot of people don't know, is you have these, these black keys that are normally white. These are all presets, all right? You have a preset for the top manual, preset for the bottom manual. Then you have a vibrato chorus section, which is here, all right? One set of draw bars, operate the one preset, all right? The next set of draw bars operate this preset, okay? Right here. So you have a set of draw bars for here, all right? And then this set of draw bars for here, all right? Then these are, the rest of these are all just factory presets, okay? And then you got two sliders here. These are for your bass pedals. I don't have mine hooked up because I don't have enough room. Then the same thing for the lower keyboard. This set of draw bars here operates preset here. This set of draw bars over here operates preset here. All right. Then over here, you have a percussion section. All right. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right. And the, this B3 has some out, added stuff on it. It has a whammy bar, which is basically a wall up pedal. And you bump that with your knee, and it goes wow, wow. All right, then it has a thing here called intercussion, which basically the re makes the percussion repeat itself. And then what I did was I pulled the knobs out of my preamp and put them here. So if I want to, I could overdrive the preamp and I can control the amount of percussion uh, from here. So I put those there, all right? Then it has another thing called intercussion, which is if you hit these, You'll get stuff like xylophone, banjo, Hawaiian guitar, vibrant harp. Of course, it don't sound like that, but it sounds similar to that. 
you know, this is 60s technology that, that's been added to this puppy. All right, so um, I'm gonna put the camera on the stand and we're gonna go through a bunch of things. Um, one thing too is uh, when I turn the B3 up, you're gonna hear a hum, that's because the, I got roll tubes in it and I never uh, got around ordering a set of tubes for it because I'm too busy buying other keyboards. All right, so here we go. All right. Now, you can hear the percussion. Also, the organ has a Fisher reverb built into it. Is uh Oh, I noticed something here. I think the, the, the I'm getting the hum from my reverb. I'm gonna have to check my grounding. All right, you have second and third. Here's the draw bars. Now, if you play the lower ones, they're just, I'll just do one at a time. different settings. I really don't like the vibrato, however, I do like the choruses. One preset, you just have like a regular organ. Now, if you go to the next preset, that's your percussion. are noticed uh, noticed for as their key click if you hit it just real lightly you'll hear the key click a lot of the clone organs are incorporating that, that key click into it okay now let's, uh, What's really cool on the lot bottom if you get a oops, wrong one. You could do like a, a bass. You really never just sit there and play. It's always... Also, you 
punch with your pedal where you're on. Okay, that's the. But you, you're kicking up the pedal. You're moving that pedal with you. That's just by the pedal. Same on the bottom. Oh, draw boards are off. Then the low C here, these are just cancels. All right, they just cancel out your presets, and you get nothing. All right. Remember I was saying about the whammy bar? Some, um, I got some work to do on this thing because it's this bee has sat around for like 40 years with no one playing it, and um, so I got to put new tubes in it. I, uh, I see. <laughs> shut the B3 off, if you keep playing it, you'll you'll hear that thing what they do on uh, Green Eyed Lady, and um, that's because of the tone wheel. Alright, so that's basically how I, uh, um, 
a Hammond B3 works. Um, hope I covered everything. Uh, it's been a long time. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, with modern day music, when using the clone wheels, um, it's a good know. It's good to know how the original works, because a lot of these clone organs incorporate everything that's on the original B3. And uh, when um, I see pictures of the new B3s, to me they're clones. If it don't have a clone, if it don't have a tone wheel generator in it, it's a clone, man. And uh, but. You gotta remember, I'm a purist. I grew up playing the B3s, and uh, so, and to those of you out there buying the B3s and chopping them, stop it. Buy a buy a clone organ. If you're gonna cut the cabinet up, don't do that. There's only so many of these original puppies left, and uh, the cabinets are beautiful. And uh, why are you chopping them? I like to like you bash your face in with an open claw hammer, man. No, but I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but that. I, I hate when I see pictures of chopping B3s and then threes down and that. Buy a clone, you know what I mean? If you gotta don't have the space or the room to carry the real thing, buy a clone. So, but um, that's basically how a real B3 works. I, I'm gonna do another video once I get tubes and that other stuff ordered. Right now I'm in the doghouse because I've been buying a lot of new keyboards and stuff and. So to, to take money out of the checking account and buy anything to do with keyboards, my wife has threatened my life. So, okay, guys, I hope you found this informative. And uh, God bless and have a good day. Bye-bye.